Hi fellow diviners, this is Casper from The Boy Diviner and today I want to talk to you about a new deck that I got, um, the Persephone Tarot deck. Alright, so this Tarot deck came with um, the deck itself with a really nice box. I don't know if you can see that, the light is quite uh, shiny. Alright, great. What beautiful art. And then this is the book that came with it. It's really nice and matte. I really like the book. And it's literally a little white book. It, it talks about um, the Greek mythology. So basically, um, I'm not really familiar with the Greek pantheon. But I I felt called to this deck, so I, I bought it. Okay, basically the truth is, I was ordering from Little Red Tarot. Um, because... You know, shipping from different different providers in the US, especially the indie providers, are, is really expensive. And L Little Red Tarot, they allow they allow us to basically bundle up decks together and ship it at one price. So buying one deck didn't make sense. Buying two made more sense, and buying three made the most sense. So I bought this was the third deck. I was deciding between this one and the Prisma Visions, and I and I felt called to work with um the Greek Pantheon, and that's why I bought this one. It also comes with a little cute uh, pouch. That I'll be keeping my deck in along with the box. I'm not gonna take it off the box. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and open the box up and take a look at the cards. Alright, um one thing about the deck as well, it came with a wrongly named um Zeus card. But the artist actually sent out a updated version, and that's what what, what we have in the deck. Of course it's not the unboxing because I, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> And I, I just opened it almost immediately once it came. So, well, that's on me. So, um, the Persephone Tarot is actually uh, created by the creator of the uh, Circle Tarot. I'm not too sure if you know about that that tarot deck. The Circle Tarot is really quite um, popular. And I already finished um, the first run. Let me... Marissa? Marissa is the creator. Marissa De La Pena. Okay, okay, Circle Tarot at, on, on Instagram, basically. So I like her art, and she has a, a book that she illustrated with a writer coming out soon. So you might want to check that out. Okay, so first, maybe I'll cover the box, actually, the box. This is an ordinary tuck box, but I, I like it because it has an extra fold. At the same time, I'm not too sure if this is on purpose, but some of the parts look a bit, like, ripped. I'm not too sure if you can see that on screen. But, um, yeah. Also, some of the cards came a bit um, marred, which made me feel a bit sad, but I guess it is what it is. Um, I think black, um, black cards are a bit hard to actually print out. So, for example, Icarus, the, uh, the full card. Can you see at the edge there? It's a, it's a little, like, white. Uh, I'm not too sure if you can see on, on the upper right here. Yeah, and, so sometimes the black is not really... a I feel like it's not really black enough, and, and it's not just lint. Like, I've been trying to wipe this part off for a while. But in any case, I love the art. <laughs> and everyone knows about Icarus, right? About how he flew too close to the sun. And then, ma the Magician. Magical Mercury. Not familiar with this card at all, but I love the imagery. Standing on a pentacle, you know, with a cauldron. Holding a wand and the sword on the floor. And then um, the namesake of the deck, Persephone. I love Persephone. I love her myth. I... The Empress Demeter. I love the humans in this deck. I'm not a huge human fan. I, I like the Wild Unknown. I like um, the Ostara Tarot. Okay, the Ostara Tarot has more, quite a few humans, but I like animal-based decks. This is one of the few decks that I like um, how the humans are portrayed. Mars. As the Emperor. Zeus. And then one of the few white cards in the... I think the only pure white background card. Lovers. The Cupid and Psyche. Karkinos. As the Chariot. Diana, the Huntress. Gorgeous. Also, the deck came a bit... I mean, it all came numbered, except for Medusa, who came 
S11. But I, I rearranged it. I love Medusa. I love the myth of Medusa. Poor, poor, poor Medusa. And then the Wheel of Fortune is the Fates. Justice. I also love the lettering here. I think everything is like hand lettered. Eratne. And then death. Life coming out of um the dead, right? New life. The nectar of ambrosia. Makes me think of ambrosia salad for some reason. <laughs> Bacchus. So the card stock isn't the most fantastic. It's it's alright. I think it's um shuffleable. But um yeah, the tower. Again, I'm not too sure if you can see, but there are like white specks, and I guess, I mean, some of it is lint, some of it is the printing, but overall, I still love the deck. It's it's just a bit um expensive, <laughs> so you know, I tend to be more picky because I did spend about um eighty Singapore sing, uh, Singapore dollars on this. Orania, as the star. Luna is the moon. So I love how she drew this. I love that there's that uh the lobster still. I'm not too sure if um the Greek Luna has has like a lobster or something. Apollo has the sun. And then Pluto. And I love this card. The world card is actually Mighty Hecate with the three hits. Gorgeous. Um, to be honest, I, I know Hecate is a, a deity that a lot of people work with and I'm not too familiar with her. But from this imagery, I find that she looks really powerful. Like, like with three hits. And then the rest of the the rest are the minors, which I'll go through quickly. The Ace of Swords, the Two of Swords, the Three of Swords, the Four of Swords, the Five of Swords. The Six of Swords. All these have to do with like um, a Greek myth. And it's covered in, uh, in a short paragraph in the guidebook that I really need to read <laughs> once I start working with the deck. This is one of the decks that um, yeah, I haven't actually worked with at all because I, I'm planning to cleanse it right after this video. But now we have good light so I want to do it now. Um, seven of Swords. Beautiful. Eight of Swords. Nine of Swords. I love this Nine of Swords. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but um, last year, the Nine of Swords is the my my like stalker card. So this interpretation is really nice. How how he you know is covering his face with a mask. <laughs> ten of Swords. Usually I see a ten, ten of Swords, you know, embedded in the body, and this is a creative way of showing the same trap nature. The Page of Swords. Like I said, I really love the human figures in this deck. The Knight of Swords. The Queen of Swords. The King of Swords. The Ace of Pentacles. Two of Pentacles. Three of Pentacles. Hard at work. Four of Pentacles. The Lock. The Five of Pentacles. The Six of Pentacles. Nostalgia. The Seven of Pentacles. Growing. 
the Eight of Pentacles. I don't really resonate with this imagery. I think I might need to read the um the guidebook. Maybe has some story behind that. The Nine of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles. There's something very charming about uh, this deck that I really like. I think it's the artist, right? Marissa is really good. And that's why I'm a bit sad I couldn't get the circle tarot, but basic okay, basically I have no more budget for any tarot decks for the rest of the year. I bought three and I have another two coming up. I basically doubled my, my tarot collection this year. Just in a month, because it's my birthday month. Uh the Page of Pentacles. Sorry, I keep rambling, I I really need to. <laughs> the Knight of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles. Gorgeous. The King of Pentacles. I love how them how they smile on the <laughs> the human figures. The Ace of Wands. The Two of Wands. Looking out. The Three of Wands. So again, I'm I'm I I don't really get this imagery too much because of um they look like pencils to me now. And I always thought um the Three of Wands is about you know looking out. The Four of Wands, I love these dancing figures. Do you see that? And then the Five of Wands, I like this too. Small conflicts. The Six of Wands as a ladder, very cute. The Seven of Wands, standing up for yourself. Not too sure about this imagery again. The Eight of Wands. The Nine of Wands. The Ten of Wands. Where things go to shit, right? <laughs> like a forest fire, I think. Okay, the Page of Wands. Feeding a fire. The Knight of Wands. The Queen of Wands. And to one of my favorite cards in this deck, the Woman King of Wands. It's so interesting, right? So interesting. I find it so interesting. Okay, the Ace of Cups. The Two of Cups. I love how you know she she uses like um those traditional Greek art and put a spin on it using her own uh interpretation. The three of cups, I love this this card. So cute. It's such a celebration, you know, like ooh. The four of cups. Someone is gonna be hung over tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> the five of cups. The six of cups. The Seven of Cups. I'm too sure that shows like illusion. I think it's another myth that I need to read about. The Eight of Cups. Leaving things behind. The Nine of Cups. Another favorite card. One of my favorite cards in this. You see that face? It's a face. And yet at the same time it's also a cup. The Ten of Cups. Another favorite court card. I love the imagery here. The Page of Cups. I don't know if he's coming out or he's going in or she's going out. The Knight of Cups. The Queen of Cups. And this is probably Poseidon or, or Triton. I'm not too sure. The King of Cups. Alright. That's the whole deck. Um, just again, this is the pouch. This is the the box and the guidebook. Okay, let me read something from the guidebook. And I'm gonna just flip to a random page. All right, right in the middle. <laughs> Apollo, the son of Zeus. Apollo is the youthful good. Is a youthful god of light. He chariots in the sun and travel with an entourage of muses. He is the party, the mediator of worlds, and his light is what helps mortals thrive. Alright, great. What a great write-up. The earth underneath 
altogether unique. Alright, it's a great deck, Marissa. Um, again, I, I paid for this deck. Something that I find a bit strange is that, um, okay, not strange, but something I'm not used to is working with reversals when the backs are not uh, reversible. And um, so I was thinking I wasn't going to use this deck as a reverse deck. Um, but the tarot deck actually provides reversals, like reverse meanings. So interesting, right? So I guess um, that's how it's supposed to work. And even if we pick up a reverse card, we just accept it or something. I, I'm not sure how that works. Again, um, I feel like um, I should also maybe etch this deck in black. I think it'll look much better. So once I start wor working with this deck, maybe I'll consider doing that. Alright? I hope this was an enjoyable walkthrough. I haven't seen anyone do a full, like, proper walkthrough of the deck, so I, I thought I would do that since I got the deck. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this. Yeah, bye. Take care.